Hello, everybody, and welcome into another edition of the SEC Power Rankings. I'm your host, Matthew Miller. Let's jump right into things. As always, we start out at the bottom, and it does not change. Again, I don't think it's going to change the rest of the year. Mississippi State is the worst team in the SEC. They have made strides. They definitely have found the quarterback of the future. Need to get more playmakers on the defensive side of the ball, cornerback safety, off the edges. I don't know if I really believe in Levy long term, but I like the quarterback. I like the weapons they have. And if they can get a decent offensive line, I actually think they can probably win six games next year, become bowl eligible. But I don't know. We'll see about them. But for the rest of the year, they're going to be here. I don't see them getting any better than they are. They got boat race versus Arkansas last week. And then this week, they were down to UMass uh, before they pulled it all together. You see a guy uh, in the stands, a recruit, tweeting out, his decommitment didn't end up doing it, but still, that's bad luck. Uh, number 15 is Kentucky. Again, I don't see them moving from this bottom pack. Not a good football team. Very underwhelming, especially you beat Ole Miss. And there's a couple games at the end of every year, guys. Head scratcher games is what we'll call them. And I think that's going to be one of the biggest ones because I don't know how this Kentucky team beat that Ole Miss team. Ole Miss had a, obviously a very bad day at the office because I still think they're a good team. They're a nine and three, ten and two type team. Kentucky's probably going to go four and eight. Not good for Mark Stoops at all. We'll see what happens. They have enough defensive talent to me where they should have been bowl eligible this year. The offense definitely was a work in progress. And every year without Liam Cohn, uh, who's I believe the offense coordinator for the Rams, is a bad year. So it's going to be very interesting how that works out. Um, going forward, if they if they do keep Mark Stoops, who becomes the offensive coordinator, number 14 is Auburn. We talked about this in the five takeaways. I don't know what's going to happen to Hugh Freeze. I think they lose out for, and they start to lose that recruiting class. There's a real chance he gets fired. Would it be unfair? Maybe, but you can't go, what, three and nine at Auburn? In your second year, you got worse with more talent. That doesn't make any sense to me. And the schedule wasn't like super difficult to me. You should beat Kentucky. You should beat Oklahoma. You should beat teams like that. You should have beat Vanderbilt. Or sorry, they did beat Kentucky. They should have beat Vanderbilt. Like you can't lose to Vanderbilt. I know Vanderbilt's a solid football team, but they're not anything better than a 7-5 team. That's what Vanderbilt is. So it's going to be interesting to me what happens with Auburn and Hugh Freeze going forward. Number 13 is Oklahoma. Uh, Oklahoma has shown, shown signs of life on the offensive side of the ball. They got the play caller somewhat right right now. They got Jackson Arnold right. Defense has been good, not great, just like in the beginning of the season. I think it was overrated. It's still a good defense. But then they put a whooping on man yesterday like they should. They still need to get those play back, playmakers back on the offensive side of the ball to become anything more than they are right now. Probably not going to happen this year, but it could happen next year. So we'll see which way they go uh, with the offensive coordinator going forward. But they've been better. They have been better. Number 12 is the most fraudulent team in the SEC. Tyler and I talked about this on the SEC live show. It's Missouri. They're going to go 9-3, and three, and they're going to be one of, if not the worst, 9-3 and three football teams I've ever seen. They have a really shitty schedule, and that's the only reason they're going to go 9-3. and three. They're not a good football team. Brady Cook is a nice player, not a, anything more than that. Luther Byrne is very good. Theo Weiss is very good. But after that, there's just a lot to be uh, – there's not enough there, guys. There's just not. Their defense has been pretty bad to me this year. The numbers will not say that again because of the schedule. I mean, their best win right now is Vanderbilt. Their second best win is Boston College, and you barely won both of those games. And I think Vanderbilt's probably like the 35th best team in the country, and you beat them by a field goal and double overtime at home. So you're probably like the 30th best team in the country. I, I, I thought they'd go eight and four. So they are exactly where I thought. A team that honestly I think is better than Missouri, Florida. Florida has the opposite. They play a very hard schedule. They've gotten better week to week, or as Missouri has like no improvement week to week that I've seen. Florida definitely has, and I think Billy Napier is making his case to stay the Florida Gator head coach. I think they're going to end up probably going five and seven. I do think they upset someone coming down the stretch. I'm hoping that isn't the te my Texas Longhorns, but it could be. They're playing that well, and I know DJ Lagway is out, so that's going to hurt them, but they've made pro progress each week, and they become a competent football team, and I think that's – Honestly, good enough this year to where I personally believe Billy Napier deserves another year. We'll see if Scott Strickland and the AD there or the AD there agrees. We'll see what happens. I do not know. Number 10, these next couple teams to me, guys, are other than the 19 we have, which is Alabama. I'll give you a sneak peek on that. Arkansas, South Carolina, and Vanderbilt are the teams each and every week can compete with the big boys or lose to any team not named Kentucky or Mississippi State. 
I do not know how they're going to show up, when they're going to show up, who's going to show up on the team, what it's going to look like, or any sort of that. It's going to it could be random. They could score fifty points, put up five to six hundred yards of offense, look really good. Next week they could put up two hundred fifty yards of offense, look really bad. Basically, watch the Oklahoma State game. You can see the greatness of the Arkansas team, and you see the absolute liabilities of that Arkansas team. And that game honestly has been a synopsis of their whole season: up and down, up and down. Number nine is Alabama. I'm still giving respect to Alabama put them here they could jump up higher if they lose this game I'm going to drop them probably to number 11 or 12 uh probably 11 I don't think they're worse than Missouri even if they lose to LSU but you need to beat LSU I think LSU is a solid football team but they're not great either you have more talent I think if you're able to keep hold of the football and not turn the football over you'll win because Garrett Nussmeyer does turn the ball over so we'll see what happens with Alabama see if that secondary has made any adjustments see if they've made any adjustments with the offensive game plan which I do think should be more run heavy if they decide to go that way we'll see uh but right now I do have them at number nine number eight I have South Carolina this team could be much higher but again Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde are they that old Miss team that shows up that old Dominion team that shows up are they the Texas A&M or the team that just beat Texas A&M last night the team that should have beat LSU the team that competed week in and week out with basically everyone they played that has something to play for I do not know I don't know what's going to happen next week if they play and lose would not shock me that's what this team is, Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde. I have no idea what's going to show up other than their front four, which is probably the best in college football with Kennard and Stewart off the edge. Uh, they had Marcel Reed in hell last night, and there should have been way more sacks on Marcel Reed. There were a lot of holding. Uh, they let a lot of holding get away on both sides in that game. I saw one where Dylan Stewart got wrapped around the neck and tackled, and they didn't call it. But I have South Carolina number eight and another team that's kind of like that, Vanderbilt. They're more consistent than the other two teams, but their upside definitely can play with the higher ep- uh, echelon teams in the SEC. But downside-wise, you see that they have trouble moving the ball at times. I noticed that in the Texas game, they go with long droughts because they rely a lot on Diego Pavia, and he's been great this year, but he's not a fantastic quarterback. He's good, um, and they've been solid this year, guys. They're going to go bowling. We'll see if they can get to seven wins. I think that's the up, the most they'll have. I don't see them going two and two down the stretch. They have a pretty damn hard schedule down the stretch, so we will see. But I do have them at seven. Number six, I have LSU. Um, They've gotten better on the defensive side of the ball. Are they great on that side? No, but they are good enough. If Garrett Nussmeyer can stop turning the ball over, I think this team could get to the college football playoff. Could. If he doesn't, they'll lose this week to Alabama. They will be knocked out and eliminated. And I think Brian Kelly, honestly, will be putting out feelers to other programs to see if he wants to, if you honestly, if he has any interest or if they have any interest in him. Uh, so that's my opinion on LSU. Stop turning the ball over. Keep playing the defense you're playing. And how about your game plan for the backup quarterback if that backup quarterback has gotten a lot of playing time? I don't think that's going to be the case the rest of the schedule that they have. But, my God, man, you can't get caught off that much off guard by Marcel Reed. And you can't give him short fields when you as well when you do get caught off guard. Next up, I have Ole Miss. Yes, LSU beat Ole Miss. They beat them at home barely. Uh and I think Ole Miss is a better football team. If I think if they played that on a neutral field or at home, I think Ole Miss will beat LSU. I don't love Jackson Hart, but he doesn't off enough offensively with the weapons around him. I think their defense is phenomenal. I think it's a top 10 defense in the country. Um, and honestly, if they can play the way they did like versus Arkansas, I think they can win out. Honestly, the way Georgia's looking, I think they can win out. I think they can beat Georgia. We'll see, though. I think that would that would knock Georgia out of the SEC championship picture, picture. Would elevate Ole Miss into that picture a little bit more, even though they have some costly losses. It will be interesting. Uh, but Ole Miss is a solid football team. Number four, I didn't. I don't think I dropped them at all. Maybe I did one spot. But A and M, I still think they're a good team. Are they a great team? No. I maybe could flip Ole Miss and A and M. I'm not flipping LSU just because you blew them out. Even though that game was closer than the scoreboard, honestly. But they're still a good, solid football team. I like everything about this football team, honestly, other than quarterback. I have no clue who the quarterback is. I don't think there's an answer this year. I think I said that last week. There's just not going to be an answer this year at the quarterback position. You're going to have to survive that position. And you have a good enough defense, or at least what I thought was a good enough defense. You have good enough weapons on the outside. And hopefully Le'Veon Moss isn't out for too long. And if he is, Amari Daniels can pick up the slack. Because now you're one, you were three deep at one point with Ruben Owens and Le'Veon Moss. Now you just have Amari um, Daniels. We'll see what happens. But. I think they're still a solid football team. Number three, I could have dropped them, and I thought about it, guys. I have Tennessee. I don't know what to think about this team. Very good defense, good running back. No idea what Nico's going to do. No idea what the offense is doing week to week, but I have to put them at three because they only have one loss. It was to Arkansas. Could they have lost a couple other games along the way? Absolutely. 
do I think they can win a national championship? No. But then I look around the country and I'm like, who do I would put 100% stock into winning a national championship? I don't have the answer to that. And I do not have the answer if they can win the SEC because I don't – I think there's like seven teams. We're not shocking if they won the SEC at this point. And they're a part of that. So we'll see what happens with them. But I had them at number three. Number two is Texas. Still going to have them here. They were in a bye week. Good bye week for them. Texas A&M loses. Uh, Oklahoma looks kind of crappy but does win. We'll see what happens. I think it's going to come down to that Texas A&M game to get into the SEC championship. I think everything will play out enough to where if they do win that game, they will be in the SEC championship if they take care of business versus Kentucky, Florida, and Arkansas. Uh, you're playing Florida with a third-string quarterback. As a Texas fan, you better win that football game. Arkansas, Taylor Green may be hurt. If he's hurt, you definitely need to win that football game. Kentucky is so anemic offensively. I think if you put up 14, 17 points early on, the game's over. So it's going to be interesting, guys. I, I Like I said, I have no idea who's going to be in Atlanta. Texas could definitely be a part of that. Number one is Georgia. I have to put them here. They won. If they would have lost, obviously would have dropped them. But I'm going to keep them here. They probably have the best win out of the SEC so far, other than maybe Alabama beating Georgia. But that was at home. It was on the road versus Texas. You can debate it, but they've only lost one game. It was to Alabama. They, I think if you play that game again, Georgia wins that game most of the time. I don't think Alabama is as good as they showed in that first half. But number one, I do have Georgia. And, guys, this list is getting harder and harder to make. Usually throughout the season, things clear up. It's getting murkier and murkier. I have no clue how this is going to turn out or how this is going to look in a couple weeks. I could be completely wrong. Alabama, honestly, if they went out, Georgia loses another game, Texas loses another game, Alabama could be number one. So, that's the list for now. I appreciate you guys being here. Again, like and subscribe to the content. I will be back here next week. Thank you, guys.